or we love comics more than I love free Slurpee Day. I'm your host, Aris Quinones. As some of you may know, our good friends over at Valiant Entertainment just released their 50th and final issue of Rob Venditti's run on their flagship book, Exo Man of War. The issue is a 64 page special that will cap off the long live the king story arc and set up for the future of the character. So to help celebrate the occasion and because a single writer hitting the 50 issue mark with the same character is a serious accomplishment in today's comic book world, we decided to do a special history of Exo Man of War episode to go along with it. If you're already a fan of Exo, you know that the book has played a huge part in the development of the current Valiant universe, as it has been at the center of many of Valiant's biggest events over the years, such as Armor Hunters and Unity. Needless to say, there is a lot Lot to cover, so we flew to New York and sat down with several members of the creative team behind XO, including writer Rob Venditti, to get their take on the high tech Visigoth and how he's evolved over the years. With that said, let's roll out. That's a Transformers reference, because I can. The 1990s was a decade of transitions and big changes for the comic book industry. Most comic book creators, as well as fans, were looking for something new and different, as many felt the story arcs for the characters in mainstream comics had become too Hollywood and shallow. This shift towards a more sophisticated and increasingly more adult audience led to the emergence of new publishers like Valiant Comics, who found almost immediate success with several new characters whose stories fit nicely within the new and growing demographic. We're a company that prides ourselves on this long-term storytelling and being able to evolve characters the way that Stan Lee would evolve Spider-Man. He'd go from the teenager to the confident guy, to the guy with the girl, to getting married, you know, to having his setbacks, and we're trying to do the same thing with our characters. Among those characters created was arguably the most important character to the Valiant universe, Exo Man of War. Exo was a book at the time, the comic book industry was really looking to find a new vision. The whole industry was looking to find a new vision. So if you remember, at that time, Valiant was launching, an image was launching, so you really had a lot of um, energy uh, going forward. The comic book stores were looking for something new, and with the environment and you know, with the talent we had, everything we did was really was you know was something people wanted to see. X Men War first appeared in 1992. He was created by a group of some of the most talented people in comics. Uh, Jim Shooter, editor-in-chief of Marvel, for 10 years oversaw a creative renaissance at Marvel, creation of Venom, Frank Miller on Daredevil, Chris Claremont on the X-Men, uh, Walt Simonson creating Thor Fraud, which is everyone's favorite Thor, Bob Layton, who co-wrote and inked some of the best Iron Man stories, uh, Baron Smith, who did Weapon X and Conan at Marvel, Don Perlin, some of the biggest names in comics, got together and they created Exo Man of War. He is our flagship character. He's essentially a Visigoth in the fourth century, abducted by aliens. His only chance to escape is to steal his suit of armor and he returns to Earth in the modern day with the psychology of someone from uh, the height of the Roman Empire. Exo Man of War blends non-fiction with fiction starting in Exo Man of War issue one in February of 1992 by telling the story of a Visigoth warrior named Ark of Dacia, who while attempting to protect his people from an attack by what he saw as demons, is abducted by an alien race and taken to one of their ships to live as a slave. After years of slavery and abuse, Ark breaks free and steals the alien's ultimate weapon, the incredibly powerful Exo Man of War armor, known to the aliens as Shanhara. He then used the armor to escape and return to Earth. But once he arrives, he quickly learns that due to the time dilation he experienced while traveling at the speed of light, over 16 centuries have passed on Earth and his Visigoth people, along with everything else he knew, were gone. So if the comic book world was looking for something different, a Visigoth warrior from the time of ancient Rome who was abducted by aliens and becomes a superhero by stealing an all-powerful spacesuit and ends up back on Earth in the 20th century should do the trick. Either way, the first incarnation of Exo Man of War ran for 68 issues and helped to dramatically expand the Valiant superhero universe as a main character in crossover events such as Unity, which is where Valiant introduced its first superhero team as Arik finds himself at war with the rest of the Valiant heroes because he refuses to fight with them against a powerful villain named Erica Pierce also known as Mother God. Valiant Comics was later acquired by Acclaim Entertainment, who relaunched a very different version of the Exo Man of War character under the Acclaim Comics banner in February of 1997. During the Acclaim years, the Exo Man of War armor became an ancient artifact of an unknown origin, kept secret by the US government after they retrieved it from the Nazis at the end of World War II, until a scientist named Donovan Wiley gets his hands on it and tries the armor on for size. Acclaim felt that Exo Man of War actually had some interesting similarities to Marvel's Iron Man. Man. 
So much so that they paired the two characters together in a video game called Heavy Metal in 1996, based mostly around the original Valiant story of the Exo Armor. But due to lackluster sales, Acclaimed Comics discontinued the book after 21 issues in June of 1999, sending Exo Man of War into limbo for over a decade. That is, until the newly reformed Valiant Comics, now operating under the name Valiant Entertainment, relaunched the entire Valiant universe with Exo Man of War issue 1 in May of 2012 giving the character new life. So in 2012, we launched the entire Valiant Universe, and we've been the best of publisher every year for the last four years, we're only four years old in terms of a publisher, in terms of publishing comics. X of War launched that universe for us, and that was a decision that was very easy for us to make, because X of War did everything we wanted to do as a company. It showcased a big, epic commercial story, that was very different from anything you were getting, not just in comics, but anything you would be able to get from anywhere, video games, movies, television. It was a character that, if you were itching for a story, a big space epic, done in a sophisticated way at a high level, there was nothing else out there like it. And he was a character that could appeal to everybody and showcase our point of view of building characters where you look at it and you say, he or she, this character, I can't believe they made this character a superhero. Of everything they do, I can't believe this character, he's so weirdly interesting and broken, but heroic at the same time and morally ambiguous and fractured and three-dimensional. And so Exo Manor was the perfect choice for us. With the relaunch, Valiant gave writer Robert Venditti license to go big with Exo's story. I think Robert Venditti did a great job relaunching Exo in that he really got to the heart of who the Exo character was. You had a character who was a leader of his world, and he was a, a man who was the leader of you know, of the military of his world who was sworn to protect. Robert also tapped into the original, you know, world that Ira came from and how would that world translate to today's world. Then did he return the character to the roots of Arik's original storyline with a few alterations. So they're these, um, these born fighters, they're trained to be fighters. And Arik is the nephew to Alric. Alric is destined to sack Rome and take over the Roman Empire. Uh, and this is something that happens in history much later. But Arik is abducted by aliens. He's held aboard their starship as a prisoner. His only chance to escape this brutish existence is to steal their ultimate weapon. He takes their highly advanced suit of sentient armor, which is uh, not just a powerful weapon, you know, the most powerful weapon in the universe, but also a, a relic, almost a, a godlike entity of sorts to the vine. What's great about this book, I think, is that we're able to tell this long form story. And so his motivations change. Initially, his motivation is he's just, he's got this bloodthirst against the Romans, and he wants to get back to his time and to his people and to his love, Deirdre, and to revenge to revenge from the Romans. And over the course of the book, he learns that that's not what a hero is, and that's not what a leader is. So it's this crazy big sci-fi epic. Art clearly has no shortage of enemies, but out of all of them, Commander Trill of the Vine might be the most dedicated. Trill developed a special dislike for Ark after he stole the Exo armor because he believes the armor was destined to choose him. What might be the quintessential villain for uh, Exo Manowar are the people that gave him the armor, the Vine this race of aliens that unlike most aliens that you see in, in pop culture, they're not out to conquer the Earth. They're out to perpetuate their species. And so they travel all over the universe and they leave plantlings. They leave people, like babies of themselves there to grow up and look like the, the indigenous people of the planet that they're on and be part of society. And so they haven't, they don't want to take over the planet. They've already done that. They just want to perpetuate their species. With so many powerful enemies and a never-ending ability to create new ones, the Exo Man of War armor Sean Hara gives Arik of Dacia some incredible weapons and abilities to survive. Such as enhanced strength, speed, reflexes, invulnerability, healing, flight, scan cloaking, energy manipulation, missiles, x-ray vision, halted aging, and the list goes on. Some of the key abilities of Arik that he gets from the armor, you know, you have your flight, you have you know, pulse blast, he shoots from his wrists. He also has the ability to generate an energy weapon. So he's got this suit of armor that's one of the most powerful weapons in the universe. It's not invincible, but it surrounds him. It's like, uh, it's like a second skin and it protects him. It also has all this knowledge and it's a sentient suit, so it can communicate with him, but it can communicate through his head. And it's got a myriad of, of weapons. So he's the most powerful of which, the most common of which are these gauntlets. So he's got these green gauntlet blasts. But this is a guy who, again, he's a Visigoth, so he doesn't understand projectile weapons. And that's what's so much fun about this character is, it's not the suit, it's the man inside. So what he does is he forms this lightning sword. So even though he could stand, he could float up in the air and shoot down rain fire on a city, he goes one-on-one uh, -on -one combat with this lightning sword and he's just chopping guys down because he's a crazy person. 
With Exo Man of War once again a central figure and catalyst for the development of the Valiant Universe, Unity is reborn in November of 2013, when Arik finds himself at war again with Harbinger, Bloodshot, and others when he invades modern day Romania to reclaim what used to be his former home of Dacia. Ultimately, a truce is called when the heroes realize that the greater threat is Toyo Horada, CEO of the Harbinger Foundation, and Exo joins Unity to battle their common enemy. Being the granddaddy of the Valiant Universe means that he plays a role in every major crossover event, but none had a greater impact on Exo Man of War as the character than the four-part miniseries Armor Hunters in the summer of 2014. I would say the biggest event uh, that has affected EXO throughout the run was the Armor Hunters uh, sort of line-wide story that we did. The Armor Hunters are a coalition like the Green Lanterns and the Jedis and they've been formed this army but they're brutal. They're, they're hunters, they're killers. They've been formed of the remnants of these lost worlds. They're people that have lost their, their homes and they've lost their planets. And they've come together and they form these little tactical units like, like SEAL Team 6 and they go out through the universe looking for armors, hunting them down, killing the bearers, and destroying the armors. What we learn in that series beyond Eric, you know, donning the mantle of being a global defender and all these sorts of things is we learn this, this big mythology behind the armor that we had been teasing out the first, you know, roughly two years of the run. And it's that uh, the armor is actually a virus of sorts that begins to alter the physiology of its wearer over time and eventually turns them into another suit of armor. And this is where the consciousness is within the armor, uh, the sentience that each armor possesses. This is where it comes from. It's the sentience of the wearer who had the armor before. Another big moment in Ark's story exposes the character's warm and cuddly side when he is married to his new boo, Sana of Loam, in issue 38 in July of 2015. But that's enough of the sentimental because the blood and destruction return in a big way as events begin building up to the beginning of Rob Venditti's final story arc, Long Live the King, in issue 47. So as we go into the last arc of the series, Long Live the King, Eric finds himself in the position of having a lot of the things he's been striving for throughout the series. Uh, he has his kingdom in western Nebraska, he's established himself as this uh, defender and, and leader of Earth. But in the midst of all that, we have the arrival of this race of uber-powerful beings called the Torment, who are an alien race thought to be mythological uh, legends almost from vines. We find out that they're real and they're here on Earth now, and how they're connected to the armor, and to Eric, and to the vine, and what it's going to mean for the future of the character, even going beyond that. Almost everything that's happened throughout the run is, comes into play here. The Armoreans come into play, the, the Vine come into play, Commander Trill uh, and Eric's relationship is, I wouldn't say resolved because it's going to be an ongoing thing for years to come, but the first phase of their relationship is resolved. Unity shows up, you know, uh, Ninjak shows up, everybody shows up in this. Uh, Rob has been playing this a very long time. Issue 47, where we have this big reveal that the Torment, which all the fans thought were this fabled creature that didn't exist, this race, are real and they've come to invade Earth and Arik has to stop them. We've got this big twist ending that I won't ruin for you or even tease you, but, um, but I think the fans are going to get really excited about it. No one's really been able to tell this kind of long form storytelling with the kind of foresight that Rob was able to bring to it, Rob Mendidi, the writer. And then I think issue 50 is going to be massive because we know exactly where we're going. Uh, with uh, the relaunch of the character, uh, with this new ongoing series, and we know why we feel like we need to give him a new series, because it's a completely different point of view than you've ever seen. We get to fulfill some of the promise of the character that we couldn't have if we hadn't built this run. This run is essentially being Earth-based, it's been about who this character is, it's, it's been about learning to work with the suit, and now we're just gonna blow the doors off everything and go crazy sci-fi, go um, completely against the grain of what you would expect from Exo Man of War. I'm struggling here not to give anything away, but we were talking all day about X of Manowar and what this book's going to be today, and it's, it's insane. With Rob Venditti closing out his run on the book by bringing Exo face to face with the Torment, his most dangerous enemy to date, and ending his final arc with a serious bang, where does the character go from here? This is the first monthly series that I ever wrote, and when I came onto the book, uh, I knew that these characters were here before me and they would be there after me. I was always conscious of, you know, you want to put a lot more toys in the toy box than you take out, you know, so there's things that the next person can use. And I was always conscious when we were working towards 50 and I was knowing that I was going to be coming off the book, like how can we leave it to open up a new chapter for the next team that comes on and, you know, the next long story of, of Eric's life. and. Uh, that's very much what this last arc is going to do. Exo's got a very, very bright future. Not only are we hitting Exo Man War 50, which is this massive run for not just Exo Man War, for anybody today in modern comics. I mean, there's only a few characters. I think Batman is one of the only other characters I can think of that's had, approaching even a run like this in the modern era. We've got big plans for Exo Man War, not just in comics, but throughout the media forums. Now, we're a comic publisher, don't get me wrong. We are a comic publisher. We only want to be a comic publisher. We always will be a comic publisher. That's who our core is. But 
the nature of the beast now is these other avenues are there and it's a way for us to touch more people and bring them into comics. And so we have a bunch of big video game news coming that I can't tell you about. We've got um, some live action content that I can't tell you about and we've got movies that I can't tell you about. But I can say that I wish that the directors on Excellent Man of War would leak so that I could talk about them because not only are they mind-blowingly awesome, the things they're doing with Excellent Man of War will make fanboy heads explode. It's really cool stuff, um, but I can't say any more than that at the moment. But notice I did say live action and movies separately. What could that mean? Big plans for XO. So if you've never read XO Animal before, if you've never read Valiant before, the way that we build our books is you can jump into any trade. But I will recommend, highly recommend, Volume 1, x Man War Volume 1, By the Sword. It's a 999 trade. It launched not just x Man War, it launched our entire universe. So I highly recommend it, unless you value your free time. In which case, stay away, because there's 56 issues so far and counting of x Man War to dive into. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No Domain Extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. The guys at Domain.com gave variants an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code variant at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. That's it. Be sure to check out the EXO reading recommendations. We put the link for all those in the description below. But I want to give a big thanks to Rob Venditti, Dinesh Shamdazani, Warren Simons, Fred Pierce, Tom Brennan, Josh Johns, and everyone over at Valiant Comics for working with us to make this episode. Also, I'm very interested to see where they go next with this book, especially after the mention of a possible big cinematic announcement coming soon. Lastly, we tried a different style for this History Of episode, as you could see, and we want to know what you guys think. Let us know whether you liked it, loved it, or could do without it in the comment section down below. But that brings another episode of Variant to a close. Remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics.